Okay, when we're doing transformations of a quadratic function, we look at it in vertex form. If it's not in vertex form, it helps to take it from standard form to vertex form. Our quadratic function in this problem is already in vertex form. So we look and see what's happening to our function. We're having a 1 fourth being multiplied. Our parent function is y equals x squared. So we're seeing what's happening to my x squared. Well, we're multiplying a 1 fourth out in front. And this is our a value, which shrinks our function. Then we see what's happening to x inside the parentheses. This is our h value. And in our vertex form formula, we have a times x minus h squared. So we've always got to change the sign of our h value. So instead of going right 4, we're actually going to go left 4. We're going negative 4. Then we look and see what's happening at the end. And we're adding 3. This is our k value. We're going to go up 3. So then we need to fill in our parent function chart. And it's negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. At 0, 0 is going to be our vertex. And then we have two points going out in both directions. So then we can take these x values, put them into our parent function to get our y value. So negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 1 squared is 1. 0 squared is 0. 1 squared is 1. 2 squared is 4. So this will never change for our parent function. So then we look and see what are we going to do to x from our function. Since x is horizontal, it's the value where our function moves left and right, we're going to subtract 4 since our function is moving left 4. So x minus 4. If we take the given function and where we have x plus 4 squared, if we scratch that out and put a y down, we see that we have 1 fourth y plus 3. Well, why? Well, 3 is what's moving us up 3. Well, our y value is up and down. So that's why we need to add 3 to y. When we shrink or stretch something, it's also affecting our y value. So the 1 fourth needs to go in front of the y. If we were to have a negative in front of this function, we'd have a negative 1 fourth y plus 3. Because when we reflect our function, we're still, reflect, we're still affecting our y value, not our x value. So then we just fill in the information that we have. Negative 2 minus 4 gives us negative 6. Negative 1 minus 4 gives us negative 5. 0 minus 4 is negative 4. Then we have negative 3 and negative 2. Since x is constant, it's going to go up or down by 1. We're going to go up by 1 every time. Then we take our given y values from our parent function and put it into our y transformation table. So 4 times 1 fourth gives us 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. And that happens for both of our 4 values. Then we put 1 where y is and we get 1 fourth plus 3. So we get 3.25 for both 1. Then we do 0. 0 times 1 fourth is 0 plus 3 gives us 3. So now we can plot these points. So we get negative 6 up 4, negative 5 up 3.25, over 4 up 3, over 3 up 3.25, and over 2 up 4. This is a very wide quadratic function, and it'll look something like that. Okay, so for finding the vertex, we can look at it in two different spots. We can look and see, one, looking at the graph, it's where it changes direction. So right here would be negative 4, 3. 
And then we can also look and see which y value is being sandwiched in between two y values that are the same. And we see that 3 is being sandwiched in between 3.25. So our vertex here is negative 4 thirds. Either way you get it is correct. We can also look at our, our um, vertex form of it, and we know that it's h, k for our vertex. So h is negative 4, and k is 3. Our axis of symmetry, if we take a line and draw it through the center of our quadratic function, we can get our axis of symmetry. Our axis of symmetry is always going to be whatever our x value is of our vertex, and it's x equals negative 4. The reason why we have to put an x equals in front of our negative 4 is because we're talking about a line. Our axis of symmetry is always a line, so it's x equals negative 4. When we talk about classifying extremists, we have maximums and minimums. And with quadratic function, if our quadratic is going up, then that means we're opening up, then that means it's going to have a minimum. And our function, it's opening up, so it has a minimum for the extreme. If it was opening down, it would have a maximum. All right, so intervals of increase and decrease. These are only x values. You never use y values when you're talking about intervals of increase and decrease. So if we look back at the function, if you think about an ant, and it's walking downhill, so that's decreasing. So our interval of decreasing is coming all the way from negative infinity and it's stopping at our x value which is negative 4. So we read our interval of decreasing being negative infinity to negative 4. Then we go back up and look at our graph. Well at this point at our vertex it starts increasing from that same point which is negative 4 and it keeps going all the way to infinity. So make sure every time you're doing intervals of increase and decreasing, you're talking about where are your x values as your function increasing and decreasing. For domain and range, our domain is always our x values. Range is always our y values. When we look at our function, we can see that our function starts at negative infinity and goes all the way to positive infinity. So our range is negative infinity to positive infinity or the symbol for all real numbers. For range, we start from bottom up. Domain is left to right. Range is bottom up. So we look and see where's our function starting from the bottom. It doesn't start till this point right here, which is 3. And that again comes from our vertex. So it starts at 3 and it goes all the way up to positive infinity. So our range is 3 to positive infinity. Now with the range, it's talking about the values of y that are included in our function. When we look at here, 3 is a part of our function, so it's included. Anytime a number is included, it gets a bracket. The reason why infinity is in a parenthesis sign is because we can never reach infinity, so it always gets a parenthesis. For n behavior, we look and see what's happening to the arms of our function. So 
since our our function is going up with both arms, it's going towards positive infinity. So our end behavior is positive infinity. If our function was going down, they would both be going towards negative infinity. And all in behavior is saying is, from negative infinity, as x goes towards negative infinity, our function is going towards positive infinity. As our function goes towards positive infinity, where is our function going? It's going up towards positive infinity. Last thing we're going to talk about is the type of symmetry. We can have even, which is symmetric about the y-axis. We can have odd, which is symmetric about the origin. And that's it. No quadratics are going to be odd. They're not going to be symmetric about the origin. Those kind of functions would be cubic functions, which look like this. Quadratic functions are only even if their vertex is located on the y-axis somewhere. That means that the y-axis splits it in half evenly. So for the function that we're looking at, it's neither. It's neither even nor odd. So the type of symmetry is neither. And that's how you find the pieces of information from your graph.